Hey, I see you sitting there, lonely by your keyboard. If you want to, just whip your fingers out, put them on your keys, type in http colon forward slash forward slash www.barbellshrug.com. While you're there, swing on over, sign up for the newsletter. We'll send you some cool free stuff. And make sure to check out Overtime. It's a sweet place with a bunch of sweet stuff. And last but not least, I know you're trying to find a bitchin' t-shirt to get your mom for her birthday. Head on over to merch.barbellshrug.com. Soccer bro. Boom. Welcome to the Barbell Shrug Podcast. I'm your host, Mike McGoldrick, here with coaches Kurt Mullican, Alex Macklin, yes. and Coach Mike McElroy. What's up? Who just turned 30. Congratulations, by the way. I'm <laughs> yeah. sorry I missed your But birthday. McElroy probably looks like he's like 45, though, for real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your biological age? 30. All right, so today we had a bunch of heated debates yesterday on what the real deal is with nutrition there's so much information out there so and we much. thought it would be a great episode to put them all together bring up all the different diets and talk to you a little bit about like what the differences are and give you some insight into what path you might need to go based on what goals you have whether it be health aesthetics or performance there's just so much information yeah. out there and so many resources that we thought it's so overwhelming. Let's talk about it a little bit yeah. and clear some things up. There's yeah, so many know. diets out there, and they're all out there for a reason. They've all had success with them. Whoever's presenting those diets, they've all had success with them for different reasons. So there's obviously well, a reason. Yeah, unless you're giving that like some of that bullshit, like hey, <laughs> lose five pounds drinking this shake yeah, yeah, all yeah. day. You know, right. like that. Real, it, real, plans. a real, a real diet with real food. Not, you know, I mean, it might work. You diet. could, you could lose five pounds just <laughs> drinking that shake yeah, only. <laughs> yeah, and then, but then you'd have to think about, okay, well. What after the five days? He gained days. 25 pounds later. Yeah, <laughs> right. Exactly. So I mean, you know, a diet, a diet. I feel feel like it necessarily. I feel like ah, I hate calling it a diet because it's, yeah. it's 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 like nutrition plan. It's it's more of a lifestyle. You know, like if you if you do this, you say diet. It's always something like that seems like temporary. It's like a temporary yeah. fix. But if you really want to, you really want to create a lifestyle, a, a, a nutrition, a lifestyle of good nutrition that you can sustain over time. You know. Yeah. So well, that, that brings up, you know. Do you when you're picking a nutrition plan, where do you start? Do you look at your lifestyle first and see what may apply best to your lifestyle? Yeah, I mean, I agree. I think if it's someone who's involved with like looking at it in a health and longevity perspective, like you don't want to call it a diet because it's not very sustainable that mm-hmm. way. But I mean, I don't have a problem calling it a diet if you're prepping for a show right. or you know like getting ready to prepping like lose lose weight for you know for a weightlifting competition. Like it could be a diet then yeah. because it's not really like a lifestyle then at that right. point. It's more like you were prepping specifically for that competition, right. Right? right? So it's not like like this is my lifetime diet. So. Yeah, but you know, but I feel though the majority of people are in that boat where it it, it does need to become a lifestyle thing. Yeah, you know, I totally if, agree. if you're if you're you know an overweight and you're unhealthy, then the only way that you you are going to you know get better is just to make those lifestyle changes and yes uh, yeah getting on a diet but i think it's really about like making those lifestyle changes and making those habit changes that will that you can sustain and and sustain this way a method of eating in life not only that but when you are doing uh nutrition a diet let's say for a competition or for a weightlifting meet why don't we try to take at least take some principles from that that are sustainable right so we're not just doing it for that temporary time maybe we don't sustain the whole thing Mm -hmm. but we take some principles that we've learned through that experience and continue it forever oh yeah 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 um with that said like all the different resources out there like you've got iifym um you know paleo diet primal diet rp strength i mean there's a ton of different resources out there uh let's talk a little bit about like the differences in some of these and why you might use them and you know why it might not be a great idea like how do you pick it you know, how do you know if that's the one for you? So if, do you have any experience with, you know, macro weighing, like, you know, if it fits your macros or paleo diet, anything like that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, I've done, I have done uh, IFYM, flexible dieting, uh, things like that. Like, so, you know, I've done paleo. 
Uh, and they're all they're all about you know it's funny because they're all kind of like the same. It's just you know there's little bitty things that you do that are differently, and those are more like the habit forming things that mm-hmm, right. are required for to make the diet successful. So like you know if you do macros, you've got to weigh and measure your food, and you've got to eat a certain amount of macros, and that's almost similar to zone because it's like uh, you know you got blocks and you got to yeah. you got to eat got those numbers, you've got to get there. Right, exactly. But then there's other things that are more general, like paleo or something like precision nutrition, which is more like just eat these types of foods and structure your meals like kind of like this. And it's more general, um, and you know, it's it's easier for people to follow because there's not so much like complicated things, steps that you have to do. Right. You know, it's well, very it's very simple. Something like the zone, and then IFYM. Like, what would the difference be then? Because it sounds like you're both, at a, in a sense, like weighing the macronutrients or right. like uh, organizing the macronutrients at certain times when you eat them. Like, what is the difference then? I mean, there's not really. That's what I'm saying. Like, there's not really that much difference. I mean, zone, you know, it's based on, you know, like percentages of your diet. So, you know, 40, mm-hmm. 30, 30, you know, 40% carbs, 30% uh, protein, 30% carb. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Protein and carbs. So, I mean, that's more like that kind of thing. And then you manipulate that percentage based on whether you want to lose weight or, or, uh-huh. or gain mass. But, I mean, same thing is for for, Mac, for IFYM. Um, and then, you know, you what that stands for? IFYM stands for if it fits your macros. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, basically, the premise behind that is you really eat yeah. whatever as long as it fits within the daily allotment of macronutrients, right. protein, carbs, and fat that you're allowed to have. So, would that be the difference then? Do they, yeah. do they like, the zone has favorable foods that they want you to choose from. Like, right. They have, like, favorable carbs and right. proteins and, and right. fats. Does this IIFYM do that? Or do they care what kind well, of food you eat? I think the zone, I mean, it, it does kind of suggest certain things, but mm-hmm. I don't think it it requires certain things. You right. can still put whatever you want into it. I think the difference is that for the zone and, like, kind of RP nutrition is mm-hmm. it gives you timing throughout the day. Like, yeah. each meal should be 40, 30, 30. So you can, and with RP, each meal should have this, this, and this. Yeah. IFYM is – or. Uh, if it fits your macros is as long as you get that amount during the whole day yeah. right. you can do yeah. all your protein and fat in the morning and then eat right. yeah. only carbs you, have, night, you could have steak fits. and skittles if you want <laughs> yes, yeah. right. yes. Yeah. Right. if you get to the end of the day you have 30 grams of fat left two, <laughs> two tablespoons of yeah. of peanut butter or, oh, whatever, there, there's or maybe you have times. 100 grams of carbs left yeah. and yeah. you eat a bunch of dry cereal yeah. there's <laughs> definitely been times where I've just literally, literally just gulped egg whites because I had protein left that's over disgusting. I remember you eating dry cereal at our retreat you just had like three three things of dry cereal because that's all you had left was carbs. Yeah. <laughs> but Bleeding see, gums. <laughs> but those, so now those those diets, I feel like, uh, especially with IFYM, um, because they are to a point where it's like, okay, well, yes, you do want to eat quality food, but you don't necessarily have to. Mm-hmm. I feel like that is more of a advanced or maybe even an intermediate level because it's like, you know, food quality at that point is not the the most Top important priority. thing. It's it's quantity because mm-hmm. you're trying to manipulate. You're trying to get your body into the optimal body composition. And so, if you're if you're a new person or you're overweight and you just need to lose weight, I would not go that route. No. I would just go like eat quality food, eat real food. If you're eating shitty food like sodas and bullshit fast food, cut that crap out eat real food, make it simple so that's easy for you to do cuz you're probably not ready to take on all the, mm-hmm. the 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 things that are required to make something like IFYM or yeah. that something like that or RP or whatever successful. Well, you said yeah. you said earlier in passing that you have these more general uh, diets for more general people like yeah. like uh, precision nutrition or paleo, and then you have these more focused things. So maybe as as, as your goals get more focused, maybe shift towards yeah. you know, those things later down yeah. the road and, and early on when you have these these broad goals like just getting in shape, just yeah. learning these habits, and just yeah. getting healthy. Stick to the, yep. the more broad. Yeah. So recognizing where you are on your journey in nutrition. So some of us are more advanced. Some of us are start just starting out doing nutrition. Uh, and recognizing that from the front end mm-hmm. to not go, if this is your first experience with manipulating your diet, mm-hmm. don't go 100% paleo and measuring right. macros and all that stuff all at once because it's probably not going to last. So when I have clients come to me, it's starting out with the most basic thing. I also have the conversation of, you know, what do you see yourself being successful with? Does this look like something you can see yourself being mm-hmm. successful with? Um, so those that's are some of the things huge, I think That's about. a really big, important thing yeah. because, because the thing is, if you cannot follow a diet and you cannot mm-hmm. follow the requirements of it, uh, the structure, you are not going to be successful. It's yeah. not going to work for you. Like the best diet is what works for you. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, and Dr. Dr. Andy Galpin talked about that at yeah. his uh, Nutrition Talk at our summit. He, like in a nutshell, he basically was like, look, you can only follow a diet plan that you're actually capable of doing. So right. if, you're, if you're not a habitual person, like it's going to be really difficult to uh, start off with your first diet ever weighing and weighing all your macros. Yeah. And, and even if you don't even know how to select good food quality, like that's got a lot to take on all at once. So like start with something that you know you're capable of, of handling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Something yeah. If you've, if you've never, if you've just now started and like you want to lose weight and you want to start a diet and you've never weighed and measure ever in your entire life and you're going to try to do a diet <laughs> that is said totally that's so condescending. <laughs> based on, totally based on weighing and measuring your food, mm-hmm. like Good luck. Like maybe you are successful. I, I, you know, if you are, that's awesome. But like for for a lot of people, that's gonna be like that's gonna be so overwhelming, and it's gonna yeah. just it'd be like they're just not gonna know where to start. And it's and and that is the way to like just get, you'll you'll do it for like three days, and you'll be like, I can't do this shit anymore. Yeah. Well, then wh- what do you suggest trying first? Then I mean, so do you start even if it's someone who is pretty habitual? Like, do you need to go that in depth? Do you need to weigh and measure everything? Could you just follow a paleo diet for six months and? And if that works, then great. At what point do you go into the very highly detailed, uh, like, nutrition programs that we're talking about, versus just keeping it super broad? Right. I think when you feel when you feel confident about what you're doing, it feels easy again creating that habit. Yeah. When it becomes a habit of doing something. Also, when I'm starting with beginners, I try to think about adding something into their diet instead of taking away something into their diet. So, mm-hmm. um, like when paleo was real popular and everything, people would come to me and ask, like, why can't I eat peanuts instead of almonds? And they're still drinking like Coke. Yeah, yeah. And it's like so trying to add in drinking water mm-hmm. versus trying to take away even drinking Diet Cokes. So if they drink more water, they're likely going to eat drink less Diet Coke. So yeah. if we think about trying to have yeah, things to add in, then it's going to be easier for them because they're not trying to be as restrictive. Yeah, so that's one place I start with beginners. Um, yeah. Any any other ways to help develop nutritional habits that you've used with clients? I mean, I think just doing small, like making small changes. Making small yeah. changes is like the most important thing like yeah. there's so there's so much stuff that you can do but should you do it probably yeah. not you know right. like making small changes like so like macros macros example of you know if someone is is drinking soda you know all the time instead of you know saying like oh well you need to stop drinking all soda at all like at all maybe drink one less can of soda mm-hmm. and replace it with water like yeah. you like we always talk about habits and and you you really can't get rid of bad habits you can only replace them with better good habits so mm-hmm. just replacing that bad habit with a good habit mm-hmm. like you know you can do that so yeah. you know i think i think having people focus on you know one small thing that you know and that comes from just either you know looking at yourself and seeing you know what all you do so if you you know write down your food for like three days and see what you ate and then oh man you ate like chips every single day like do you need to eat those chips yeah maybe yeah. try to maybe try to substitute those chips with something else like a healthier snack like some fruit or some yeah. vegetables i or think things um, like that. the thing that i kind of teach people it sounds bad at first, uh, but I like to like Here we plant. Go. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> I, like to, I like to plant seeds in, in people's heads, like give them just like a mindset way to think. And so, I think I was reading uh, maybe it was the Warrior Diet. You know, that's really that's an old yeah. school, mm-hmm. Ori Hoffmeckler. But uh, kind of plant like a little bit of a almost a, a, a tiny superiority complex in your head when it comes to food. Now, you don't voice it. You don't walk by somebody who's eating a bag of chips and be like, eh, shitty. <laughs> but, <laughs> but think about it in terms of like. Uh, predators versus like, or like a vulture. These people are eating like this cold, dead food. <laughs> I like to tell them like they're eating this cold, dead food that was like left by somebody else. Someone else prepared it, <laughs> and they're just over there picking over it like vultures. It probably and here is you are, this guy who's working out. Cold, yeah, dead yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah, you gotta think of like, okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna work out, I'm gonna earn my food, uh, I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna prepare it. Yeah. Uh, you know, hmm. it's the capture kill kind of thing. Yeah. And so like whenever you're walking through the airport and everybody's eating this this bagged crap, you know, <laughs> yeah. you, you have this thing in your head like that's cold dead food that they're yeah. they're, they're picking over that someone else left for them. Yeah. <laughs> and so like, yeah, it sounds bad, you know, don't say anything cuz you, then you're a dick about it. <laughs> but but if you have that mindset, it kind of just helps you just make better food choices. Yeah, yeah that's a really good yeah. idea. How many of you like cooked greens? I think you all should go to hell. <laughs> okay, so now he's gonna do the two pauses. Speed, boom, okay? Into the overhead squat. So that, like I said, the, this teaches the, the, also the positions plus the timing and the speed. Funny story, it's actually not funny, it's pretty disgusting, but um, <laughs> I just gotta tell it because it was the craziest thing I've ever seen. 
Um, last week I was doing a yoga session and uh, we're like 20 minutes in. You earlier, remember how quiet it was? Everybody's guard was down, it's relaxed. And we're doing this stretch, hips, uh, hips are flexed, we're, we're rotating sideways, and all of a sudden I hear, ah, 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 this lady just starts screaming. And I'm like, I mean, I'm freaking out because my guard is down, I'm chill, you know, I'm in that zone. And I look, I mean, this lady is losing it. She dislocates her hip doing yoga, all right? So it's not always mobility. Sometimes you need stronger hips, stability. So Kurt's gonna just get the bar up, he's gonna cusp it in the hips. I'm cusping. <laughs> and bend over kind of on the bar. So if you find a vegetable you hate, I would counter you and say, you don't hate that vegetable, you hate the way that you prepare that vegetable. Anybody ever heard that happen before? In yoga, man. <laughs> I mean, that poor, I feel so bad for her just because it's, you're training, you kind of maybe could kind of consider that. It's a high, you know, high stress environment, a lot of noise going on. But your guard is down in yoga. That's your safe zone. <laughs> oh. Most of the time what I've noticed with smaller athletes like myself, even if I have the same one rep max as a larger athlete, lowering the weight down. <laughs> you're better than me, so I can say that. <laughs> uh, lowering the weight down, even if we had the same lift, which we don't. Yours is much higher than mine. <laughs> <laughs> Even if we have the same lift, even if we have the same one rep max load, the smaller athletes tend to have a harder time lowering the weight down and going back up and handling that load over reps. So, but it still needs to be a trained, uh, a, a, a piece in your training program that you actually focus on and work on. Turns out, like his favorite part of the whole day is to have a piece of toast in the morning with his coffee and his breakfast. And I'm like, that's it? Eat your piece of toast, I don't care. <laughs> now high pull is where you start moving the arm, using the arms, but the arms don't come into play until you've extended the hips and the knees, okay? You'll see a lot of people, they'll, they'll pull early, it's like, oh, I, I can't stop bending my arms early. It's because you're trying to use your arms instead of using your legs to make the bar go up. The legs do most of the work and then the arms come in after you've extended. And he was like, really? Like, I, I can have toast and I'm like, yeah. He's like, what's carbs? I'm like, I know. Is it really stressing you out? He's like, oh, it's the worst thing ever. I'm like, then have that 100 calories of toast. We'll figure it out elsewhere. And he was like, <gasps> and he like saved his life. <laughs> My point is, back to the beginning, do not make decisions that stress you out. That stress you got is worse for you than that 100 calories. Anybody heard that if you stretch your hamstrings too much, it, it, it's a huge decrease in power? Which is probably true, but it, how much do the tight hamstrings actually take away from your power because you can't get into good positions? All right? So for most people, it's usually proper position more important than worrying about that record-breaking performance. It's a different lift than when you see his videos of him doing it with, for a one rep max. Uh, so obviously, given the obvious the conditioning differences, which we understand that, again, the, the technique is different for both to adapt to whatever the workout is. Kendrick Ferris is, is trained to do one rep at a time, perfect lift every time he lifts, every time he gets in the bar, as soon as he picks the barbell up, he's moving perfectly. Uh, ben Smith is trained to do that, but also to do uh, faster reps and get in whatever technique that he needs to to make the fastest workout. If you like cooking though, I'll give you an example. My lovely, lovely, wonderful girlfriend loves cooking. And when we first started working together, I am basically set up the approach, hey, let's cook all of our meals on Sunday kind of thing because I don't like cooking either. And it's like two weeks in and she's just like in tears. I'm like, what the hell's going on? She's like, I don't get to cook dinner anymore. I'm like, you don't have to or you don't get to? You don't have to, right? And she's like, I don't get to. I'm like, you like cooking? Yeah, that's my favorite part of my day. I'm like, I hate it. You love it. This is going to work great. <laughs>
Do you want me to just say like kind of each line like separately and then we can just piece it together? So what is overtime? Huh? So what is overtime? Um, overtime is our brand new membership site. It's gonna be packed full of barbell shrug content that you're not gonna find anywhere else. Um, so on overtime, you're gonna find videos from our barbell shrug coaches, guests of the podcast on really anything that they wanna teach. So any topic like weightlifting, nutrition, mobility, technique, Anything that they want to cover, it's going to be found on Overtime. We're going to be coming back with some... So we're also going to be coming back with our Nuggets and Pearls video series where we answer your questions round table style. Uh, and also coming up with some new video series like The Breakdown. Breakdown. Where we take a, we take a name wad and we break it down for some, for some uh, avatars yeah, we've like come up Reggie. With some, yeah, Reggie. <laughs> Guess who Reggie is? Reggie is totally Alex. <laughs> Uh, we also got some other content. CTP, you want to fill yeah, it in? Yeah, so anything from now on that doesn't make it actually into the show, if I have to edit it out or it just didn't fit or we couldn't find a place for it, any kind of things that normally would have just never been seen uh, will now be uh, able to put in overtime. So yeah. exclusive to overtime members, that's all the behind the scenes stuff. If I took a big chunk of the podcast out for some reason just because it didn't make sense, but it's still good footage, it's all going to be in there. Yeah, so nothing you're going to be able to find on YouTube or anywhere else. It's only going to be on overtime. So videos aren't all we're doing in overtime. It's also, we're also gonna have training programs like <laughs> like and and getting <laughs> We're also gonna have a bunch of training programs for you to check out. They're all gonna be goal specific training programs. Like for instance, if you wanna get your first pull up or you're looking to compete in your first weightlifting meet, or you wanna squat a house. Or you wanna crush the open. Or you wanna crush the open. That's all gonna be in overtime. And we're constantly gonna be adding new programs and new videos and all that kind of stuff on a regular basis so you never get bored. And there's always gonna be something for you that you need and that you want. <laughs> that you need and you want. <laughs> there's right. always gonna be something that you need. <laughs> so finally, there's our online forum. We're calling it The Garden. So The Garden is going to be a place where we connect with you guys. It's going to be a place where you can ask questions, get help, connect with other people in The Garden, other members, other shrug thugs. It's going to be a place where our coaches, our staff will pop in. So like me, G, CTP, Mike, Doug, everybody all pop in. Everybody. Oh, it's gonna be. It's not gonna be a place where you check Facebook. You go and check the garden first right, when you right, first wake right. up. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So overtime is gonna be sick. I can't wait for you to check it out. Anyone who's interested, I'm gonna send you a preview of overtime. So I want you to check it out. Let me know what you think. <laughs> hey, just say I'll see you on the inside. I know. I'm just. I'm just. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to. Collect. But you already nailed the take. Is what I'm saying. I'll, you don't have to say it again. Oh. I don't have to say it again? No. Oh, what do I say? Just say, I'll see you on the, and I'll see you on the inside. Okay. And I'll see you on the inside. Just do a couple more takes of you saying that. And I'll see you on the inside. One more time. And I'll see you on the inside. <laughs> All right. And I mean, go, going back to what you were talking about, how do you know, like, when you're ready? You know, I think, I think when, you'll know when you're ready when you have established, like, good habits and you yeah. can you can you can have that control and that mind that that mindset of like okay i know like you know i'm eating this and i'm choosing to eat this it doesn't have this power over me i feel like there's a lot of emotional attachment yeah. to food and things like that mm -hmm. if you have if you get to a point where you you now have control and you see food as you know uh, something just to give you the energy and things like that and you you're not you're not in control the food doesn't control you you know, I feel like that at that point, you're probably ready to like go to the next level and be mm -hmm, like, okay, right. now I'm ready to like, actually now I want six pack abs. Like give mm -hmm, me them yeah. shits. You know? <laughs> yeah. I think, I mean, obviously having a healthy relationship with food is very important, but I want to talk a little bit more about the differences and what it might look like if you're performing versus aiming oh, yeah, at aesthetics versus just health and longevity. Yeah, so if yeah. you're someone who's trying to it is only worried about your performance in the gym. It doesn't really care about what your body looks like. I mean, even though probably subconsciously deep down inside, you still do. Um, even the point being is that, you know, weight gain, whatever, you just want to perform. Like you're worried about that number. Like yeah. what might that look like versus someone who's just eating for health and longevity? Yeah. I mean, for me, in my experience, when I was trying to be a high level uh, CrossFitter, I, I went into a little bit of the paleo kind of lower carb ish diet and I ran into a brick wall Tanked. hard yeah um and, well, and like it affected why? everything in my life because i wasn't getting the carbs and and the fuel that i needed to fuel that performance training twice a day mm -hmm. training hard twice a day i wasn't getting the uh fuel that i needed 
And also you end up carrying a little bit more weight when you do that because your hormones are mm-hmm. all jacked up. Yeah. Um, so adding in all those carbs actually helped fuel performance. And since then, not with myself, but other clients, as we've slowly had them bump up their carbs, it's done a lot more for their performance and their aesthetics. Yeah. So the beginning of the year, it's very popular. You have the whole 30 challenges. You have the, the new payload challenges, which I think are great. It kind of gives everyone a good restart. But a lot of athletes or high-level exercisers in gyms uh, hop on that wagon and then they cut out their carbs because they're just trying to go low carb. And what they don't do is they don't supplement the, the proteins and fat fats with it. And yeah, they do lose some weight, but man, they are hurting in the gym. Yeah. And some of them are okay with that. They're like, look, I don't care. My goal was to lean out, but don't expect them both. I'm not saying they can't, yeah. but just be ready for that. Be ready yeah. for that shift that if you're going to reduce your calories like that, like it's going to hurt. Have you yeah. ever done something like that? Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I've gone strict paleo before and um, I'm trying to remember back, like, I don't really remember a huge drop off in performance for me personally, but I also was very diligent about it. I still ate a lot of food. I had really yeah. good post-workout shakes, like, like lots of sugar afterward. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was only training once a day then when I did it. And it was like way at the beginning when I started CrossFitting. Now, gotcha. how I actually got into that kind of dieting was the first thing I ever did was the zone diet, which mm-hmm. I was a big fan of. I, I don't do it now, but I was a big fan of it then because it taught me portions. Yep. It right. taught me portions, how to look at something right. and be like, that's about six yep. to eight ounces of meat. I should have that much mm-hmm. at every meal, mm-hmm. followed with vegetables around it pretty much, you know, yep. and then a little bit of fat. And that's a really good starting point for someone who's never dieted before. So I was, yeah, definitely. I, th- I think it's like a really easy way to, to learn how to start weighing and measuring your food and kind of tracking that and figuring out what a good plate looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Now, a couple of years down the line, um, again, I'm very grateful for that because it helped me figure out what works for me personally. So depending on what training cycle it is, I actually have to watch how many calories I eat sometimes when I'm doing CrossFit because I'm a heavier CrossFitter. I'm 210 right now, 215. Fatty. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm a fat crossfitter. And uh like I don't need to weigh a lot more. Like right. it's gonna slow me down on gymnastics. Like I, I gotta compete against dudes who are just as strong as me that are 180, 185 pounds. So I'm um, not cutting calories, but I'm definitely watching what I eat. Mm-hmm. The one eighty fives that have the great genetics, they can just eat whatever they want, lift, they keep getting stronger and you know what? I see that and I might try and mock that, but that's a bad idea because it's not me. Right. Yeah. So you got to figure out what works for you and it takes time. Yeah. And that's per- what you were saying. That, that's personally why I like, uh, you know, the macros and like RP style, like of, of, of diets, because every macronutrient is important. Like, mm-hmm. you know, if you're not getting mm-hmm. enough carbs, like you said, like if you're doing high volume training and, you know, you're training twice a day, you are going to fall on your face because you are not going to have any kind of energy to, to tackle your training. And yeah. then you're not going to make progress. And then same thing. Protein is necessary for, you know, recovery and building muscle and things like that. And fats are even important because fats uh, are synthesized in your body and they turn into, you know, your hormones like testosterone and things like that. So you have to have all of those macronutrients in the right quantities because if you eat too much, if you eat too little, you're not going to be optimized for good performance. So mm-hmm. I find that for me personally, um, you know, if I am not tracking and not figuring out how much that I need to eat, I tend to either under eat or overeat. I don't eat the right amounts. And so, mm-hmm. and so my performance is going to, is going to come down or I'm going to get unnecessarily fat when I don't need to. And as a weightlifter, you, you have to, you can't really go super heavy into your, and, and, and train, you know, mm-hmm. you, you want to train around where your body weight is. So I'm, I'm really trying to maximize performance and stay light yeah. and yeah. that, you have to have, I feel like, a lot more structure and a lot more detail in, in quantity of, mm-hmm. of foods that you need to eat. To, and if you can't just, handle that, go be a super heavy because then you can eat whatever <laughs> you want. <laughs> I think it's important to note, too, when we're talking about performance and your performance dropping if you're not getting enough food or if you're not getting enough carbs or something, we're not just talking about performance in the gym, but performance outside of the gym and your oh, work yeah. or brain. your family or whatever. Yeah. You can't. Your brain doesn't function the same way, so you can't concentrate. Yeah. You don't have the energy to play with your kids or whatever. Uh, so it's not a performance drop just in here, but it's a performance drop all over. Everywhere. And it just gets worse and worse. Yeah. Until I mean, they make those wall. jokes like, I haven't had a carb in a week. But like, <laughs> if you've ever gone extremely low carb or close to ketogenic, like, you, I'm not, I get depressed. Yeah. And I'm just like, <laughs> I can't do this <laughs> I don't even want this. It's so hard. Yeah. It's brutal. Well, I think yeah. that's a good segue into into being happy with what, with what you decide yeah. to do and, yep. and, and kind of how to take that. So. Yeah. Yeah, so, and then, you know, if you're someone who's after fat loss, uh, the differences in performance there, um, people feel like, like now it's so popular that if you're 
aiming at fat loss only that you just always remove the carbs. Mm -hmm. However, I mean, it is extremely effective for a large chunk of the crowd, um, especially for a, short if, period of time. for a shorter period sure, of time, yeah. because you need this thing called metabolic flexibility, right? It's like if you completely cut the carbs, right, you're trying to get your body better at using, at burning fat as a fuel source, not, not carbs all the time. However, you become stagnant in that environment. So the carbs, when you eat them every once in a while, it's going to develop those spikes. It's going to get your body used to shifting back and forth to go into different fuel sources. So it's really important. So I'm not saying that it doesn't work for everyone, but like, just keep that in mind that going super low carb all the time might not be the best idea. Yeah. You got to monitor it. I, I think the more important thing about with fat loss and carbs is nutrient timing more than anything else. So if you're going to eat carbs, like, and this is what a lot of a lot of diets now are, are popularizing is about nutrient timing. And this is this is old school. I mean, window of gains. Yeah. Okay, like if you train hard and you know you just did a workout, that's when you want to eat your your higher carbohydrates of foods. And the rest of the day, you should be eating you know yeah. meats and vegetables and things like that, like lower G lower glycemic index foods, and then you save your higher glycemic index, which is glycemic index is like basically. Uh, quickly to digest. Yeah, how, yeah, how how much it raises your insulin or whatever. Yeah. Um. So so things like rice, pasta, breads, those are higher GI. So you want to save those to like after after training, and that's a habit that you have to develop. You mm -hmm. cannot you cannot just sit there and just be like I'm gonna do this because because if you've never done it before, you don't have that habit already in place. That's not something you're gonna do. So you know if you're a beginner type person you're just starting out like just focus on eating quality i think quality foods don't worry so much about nutrient timing don't worry about that and then when you get a handle of you can eat quality you can eat you know you have an idea of what portions are are, are for you that work for you then you start going to those more advanced concepts and 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 getting developing those habits and we have yeah. some people ask about like intermittent fasting too and just taking that in consideration along with macros or quality and what he mentioned about being happy with your nutrition uh, and looking at your lifestyle first. So when you're looking at a nutrition plan, maybe you do look at what are your goals, you know, performance or aesthetics or just health and longevity, but also your lifestyle. So if you have, you know, a doctor that has a 12 hour shift that ha literally has zero time to eat, maybe he's an yeah. ER doctor or something, doesn't have time to eat. That may be a place where intermittent mm -hmm. fasting may come in. But the point is not necessarily intermittent fasting. The point is looking at your lifestyle. Look at your sure. lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like you were talking about that with your job and your lifestyle, the macros thing was relatively easy. Right. But if you have a busy, like, nine-hour day, yeah. that's really tough. It's really tough. And you're going to have to, again, it just goes back to also habits. Like, you, if you have a freaking full-time job with, like, three kids, you got to take a soccer <laughs> practice. Mm -hmm. And you thinking about you thinking about weighing and measuring your food out for every meal, thinking you're going to have time? No way. You've got yeah. to. Much you know, no I, way. You can't do it. I respect those that do do that. <laughs> I, I don't know how they, do I don't know how they they, <laughs> they, they they do, do it do. because because you know, unless they've got it down to where they eat the same things every day yeah. and they don't care about I think that, that. I think that's a thing. Yeah. They'll eat the same shit all well, the time. Well, I mean, and that's that's fine and that's totally yeah. fine, but like if you Is if, it? <laughs> I mean, if it wor if it works for you and that's yeah. what you like doing, I mean, some people can do that. Yeah. But, you know, like if you are t thinking about cooking a different meal every day and then trying to play food Tetris on my yeah. fitness pal and like figure this shit out, <laughs> like that's going to take up so much time. I know so, I'm not trying to count almonds in my minivan. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you're going to have to develop a habit of, mm -hmm. you know, meal prep, like doing it on a weekend or whatever day you can do it. And then that just that just all I mean, I feel like that's still it's all very it, it, Nutrition, especially if you're just you're just starting out, just keep it simple as mm -hmm. possible and work on developing these habits one at a time, you know? Yeah, and kind of like Galpin said at his thing, the chef versus the baker and keeping it simple. Uh, I think keeping it simple translates two different ways in different people's minds. Some yeah. people measuring and weighing is the simple way. Right. Yeah. Some people That's quality true. is, that is the true. simple way. That is yeah. true. So, I mean, it just goes back to, again, what is your preference? Yeah, so what about those that – Let's let's address the people that have tried these diets, right? So they're a few years in, they're they're kind of past a beginner. They've tried these things. I say the biggest one I see is someone who's exercised, who exercises uh, consistently, eats clean, so they say, and can't lose weight anymore. Like, what are some things they can do? What are some recommendations? Like, what are the first things you look at? Uh, honestly, <laughs> if if they've done it for a long time and they still can't lose weight and they're they're training, um. <laughs> and they've tried maybe a bunch of diets, then like I was saying, like you're probably the common denominator here. Like there's something going on that you're not doing. Uh, and maybe you need to maybe look at yourself and, and kind of assess all the things like reality you know, check, reality yeah. check. Like, 
you know, write down your food for five days and oh shit, you ate, you drank that whole bottle of wine the other night. Like, <laughs> where did that come from? Like, but it was oh. red wine. <laughs> like, it was it was made from grapes, so it's fruit. But like, <laughs> no, nah, but like that's the type of stuff. So maybe look at some of that stuff. You may figure out some ways, some things that you know maybe your habits aren't as good as you thought they were. You know, yeah, I think looking at, at at how long you stick to a nutrition plan. So yeah. maybe you've tried all these things. Maybe you tried all these six different diets all within a month. Yeah, and of course none of them are gonna work because yeah. you haven't stuck to anything for a long period of time. So making sure you're sticking oh, to that something. That drives me for so crazy. I'm all about helping the you, like you said, like kind of beginner to intermediate. They've maybe, let's say it was paleo, because that's always like kind of step start, one, or, yeah. or you know, for a lot of people, they get in, they start paleo, and and they're not losing weight, um, or they have stopped losing weight. Hmm. And my biggest thing is like, are you doing what is setting you apart from from the crowd? Mm-hmm. You know, if or, or are you trying to kind of fit your diet to them? Like, are you making almond flour pizza? You know, right. or paleo, paleo treats, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like or or paleo brownies. Are are you doing it just for the sake of calling it paleo? And, yeah, and, like you know, gluten free, right? And to me, that. to yeah. me, that's not you're not you're not doing what sets you apart. You're eating regular people, regular everyday yeah. foods, which is like this paleo moniker on it. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, all right. So let's say that you are doing everything right, like because we've just kind of attacked everyone, assuming that it's all their <laughs> problem. It is their problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's all your fault. No, no, we're not saying that at all. Um, so if somebody has tried it, they've done it right. Yeah, they've done it and right, and they really it. have. Go hire a nutrition expert. You know, Find someone that you trust that can take a look at it and give you some advice on that. Um, maybe you haven't tracked it to the extent that you thought. You know, Have them look at it. Take a look at your lifestyle, too. You know, We're talking about trying to fix an eating issue that you might have and that's not helping you get the goals that you have without even looking at what your actual lifestyle might be yeah. mm-hmm. causing that problem. So yeah. you could be eating absolutely perfect. And if you're only getting six hours of sleep each night and training uh-huh. hard, you're working against yourself, right? So, I mean, take a look at that stuff too. You know, yeah, you've the got sleep, the sleep is hormones, also hormones, take a look at your, hot, your yeah. lifestyle, get some blood work done. There's a lot of other things you can look at. And, and in my opinion, I think that that should kind of be done first. Yeah. But again, um, if you're a beginner, I'm not going to tell you to go do all those things. Like try and do the simple thing first because right. it's cheaper just to go eat clean rather than yeah. like go and get all these doctors and stuff. But there's definitely people you can consult for that, right? So like go yeah. hire an expert and get some advice there. Well, that's, I mean, that, you mean you bring what you bring up is a good way to see if, if what you're doing is actually working. I, f- I hear this all the time. Like, well, like, I don't know if this is working or not because, yeah. you know, maybe sometimes and the scale lies, the mirror lies, like everything is, you know, a lot of things work against you in terms of, you know, are things working or not. But, you know, you brought up an excellent point. You know, if you go get go get your blood work done and, you know, if your tri- if your triglycerides have dropped because you started changing the way that you eat, that's that's progress, too. Like, yeah. don't, don't always worry about like it's getting healthier. Yeah, you're getting healthier. Like, I feel like people just, oh, man, if I don't see my abs in the mirror, I just that I, this shit ain't working. But <laughs> but I mean, that's like so that's like so on the opposite on the other end of the spectrum, like in terms of like, you mm-hmm. know, what you are going to do, like what the results for nutrition, good nutrition. You know, that's like at the end, mm-hmm. you know, you got all this other good stuff in between, like a healthier, healthier lifestyle. You get better sleep, better energy, things yeah. like that. Yeah. that. Things like you can measure and and will maybe, you know, if you measure those things, you can see those things that are making progress and help you get some more motivation to keep going, you know? Yeah, yeah I guess it comes down to what your definition of health is. So if your mm-hmm. definition of health is being extremely low body fat, you know, so let's say you get there and you're like, I see that ver- version of me and I know I'll be happy once I get there. But when you do, you realize the effort it takes to walk around that shredded because A, it's not in your genetics to be there naturally. And B, it's a shitload of work and yeah. time out of your life. And maybe you're not even enjoying yourself anymore. You're not able to go have pizza with your buddies or whatever because this that's your idea of what you had built up in your head is that's healthy. Your yeah, yeah. So just ask yourself, like spend some time. That That's the biggest thing I can say here is like, really sit down and figure out like what is healthy to you and like why it's so important that body fat is the definition of health. Yeah. Again, I think like I mentioned it earlier, like when you're looking at these new different nutrition plans, you need to be able to see yourself being successful and see yourself being able to do this for the long mm-hmm. term and see yourself being sustainable in this uh, nutrition plan. If you can't see that before you even start it, then when mm-hmm. you get into it, you're definitely not going to be able to sustain it. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, are you doing, it. are you doing this out of, out of self love or health or wanting to take care of yourself or, or, you know, do you think that when you have abs there, uh, you know, you're going to yeah. get the validation that you've been yeah. looking for? Yeah. yeah. It's tough. I, f- I, feel, I feel like that's a big, th- that's a big thing that, you know, uh, a lot of people, they, they have external pressure to, 
to get you know this ideal body composition or yeah. the ideal look and they're not doing it for yourself mm-hmm. i don't care who you are it's got to be for you mm-hmm. i don't i'm i'm sorry like mm-hmm. you can have you can have somebody okay yes the 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 getting the validation from other people and whatever but it's gonna honestly run out. it's got it's going to run yeah. out you you have to have your own intrinsic motivation it yeah. has to be for you because right. you want to do it cuz you this this shit is not easy it's going to take a lot of it's a lot of work yeah. and if if you don't have that intrinsic motivation to do it for you you are not going to you're not going to see it through it just yeah. it just won't it just won't happen um and yeah, that that's that's to me the most I, I, one of the most important things. Yeah, I mean, like, as soon as you don't get that validation on Instagram, yeah. then you're gonna quit yeah. doing it. Yeah, you just go bump <laughs> yeah, like, into your end result. I, I hear a lot. I hear a lot. Like, well, if I don't lose weight, like my girlfriend or my boyfriend, yeah. they'll, they'll leave me. And then, and then, okay, and Screw you lose them. weight, and yeah, they left. They left you anyway. Yeah. Like, right. you know, what do you do now? Yeah. You know, it's got to be for you. It's yeah. got to be. Yeah. yeah, those are all really good points. Um, you know, so we gave you a lot of information. We talked a little bit about the differences and how to eat if you're just looking for, you know, health longevity, like have a really good relationship with food, Tr- look long term, like the way am I eating right now? Can I do this? Can I see myself doing the same thing in six years? That's a really good question yeah. to ask yourself. If Sustainability you're someone, for sure. Yeah. So if you're someone who's after aesthetics, like power to you, I think that's awesome, but just know exactly specifically what it is you're eating for mm-hmm. right and and ha- and there's nothing wrong with doing it for any reason right if it's aesthetics if it's performance just have a good idea that you know you know what it is you're heading toward yeah because mm-hmm. they are different they definitely yeah. are different in terms of you know what you're and none gonna are right or wrong do. yeah yeah and but but you know and and one of the main things is too is like yeah sustainability developing good habits and so you can be consistent at doing it and so you you're not just sitting here doing it for like three days and you'd be like oh well, i don't really want to do this anymore yeah. <laughs> you know so you've got to you've got to be able to see it look at it, something and be like okay i can do this and stick to that plan yeah i think that's one of the hard things talking about looking at what you're doing right now and what the purpose is right now and developing habits. It's one of the things I've heard people have trouble with, with the, if it fits your macros. And then also personally, uh, the, the struggles with training for performance for such a long time, you know, I trained to compete for such a long time doing two a days and things like that, where I could pretty much eat whatever I want. Um, because I am a lighter person anyway. So Mm -hmm. I was trying to keep up with it. Um, and now transitioning out of that into just fully a coach and only training one hour a day just for health and longevity, I find that those habits that I thought I had under control are actually a little bit harder than yeah. I thought to mm-hmm. let go of because I'm yeah. not training that way. So no, I, I have to dial that I've back. I've been a there bit. too. I'm I'm in the middle of it right now. That'd be a that'd be a, a fun episode to just talk about too in terms of getting used to adjusting training volume yep. and lowering calories because mm-hmm. For a while, when I was hitting triples, doubles, whatever, like yeah. I was like, I eat whatever I want. This is yeah. awesome. And now I'm like, man, I actually gotta watch what I eat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Stuff. Look at food; it gets just, just ass grow twenty pounds. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have anything else you want to add? I, think I, think, that, I don't. I don't think I have anything no, else. Yeah. 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 The main, cool. main thing to close out, I think, is just looking at your lifestyle, looking at making sure you know what your purpose is with your nutrition, yeah. and looking at what you think is sustainable for and, you. And going make forward. sure it's for you. It's be happy. Be, you yeah. gotta, you gotta, be you gotta do you and and treat yourself. Yeah. That's uh-huh. what you gotta do. That's what yep. it is. All right. Cool. <laughs> Very cool, guys. Thanks for listening. Thanks, Thanks. for listening.